Welcome friends, today we are going to learn two very interesting topics of analog to digital converter. The first one is the dual slope converter and the second one is successive approximation converter. So let us learn one by one. The dual slope converter. So as the name suggests, the conversion technique includes two different slopes. So what are these two slopes? Basically we have an input voltage which has to be converted from analog to digital form. So we will keep on integrating certain voltage levels so that a counter is incremented from one value to another value. So once the counter counts the exact input data which has to be measured then the output of the counter is last and the output is pushed into a display device which displays an equivalent of the analog signal which has been converted into digital data so how it works basically it has an integrating device which is made of a, an op amp so how an op amp integrator works let us understand that first so you have an op amp so this op amp should have an inverting input and a non-inverting input so when i am using the op amp as an integrator so i will use a feedback path through a capacitor you are applying an input voltage which can be a changing voltage with time say V in and you are measuring this voltage after integration as V out so V out is the output of the op amp and as we all know that op amp output is a fixed output voltage which is independent of the load connected to it so here at this point uh, we have an input current I in the current through the capacitor is IC so because the non-inverting input is connected to the ground so this minus one is the virtual ground so let us write the voltage equations through KVL we start from V in so minus V in plus this resistance is R the capacitor is having capacitance C so R plus R I n so this current should have this path but here you have the virtual ground so this voltage is equal to the ground voltage it's equal to the ground voltage so you should have a zero over here equal to zero so this is the first equation which will definitely give us I in equal to V in by R. The second one will again have the path from this one. So the path should be like this, like this. So you have minus V in plus R I in plus the voltage across the capacitor 1 by C integral 0 to infinity. IC DT plus V out equal to zero. So this is the second equation of KVL. So how it will go? So from the second one, as because this this part, the first part, it becomes zero. So you can write. 1 by C integral 0 to infinity this IC is same as IR because the ground is virtual ground is not allowing any current so I in is same as IC so I can write here I in I in DT plus V out equal to 0 this is nothing but 1 by C integral of 0 to infinity replacing the value of I in from here 
to here so i get v in by r dt plus v out equal to zero so you can have v out v out equal to 1 by rc r is taken out integral 0 to infinity v in dt so you can understand that the op amp circuit is integrating the input voltage and which is reflecting at the output the counter we have already studied about ticket counter so the counter which are we going to use in this application is counting from 0, 0, 0, 0 to ff ff so let us see how it happens we will first see the diagram so let us draw the diagram as we have drawn here this our amp is there minus plus this is the ground and you have the input resistor here i am using two different reference voltage levels one is vr the reference voltage and another is v in the voltage to be measured like this so this output is integrated to a capacitor and the output of the integrator goes to a 16-bit binary counter this goes to a 16-bit 16-bit binary counter this measures from 0000, 0, 0, 0 to ff ff so you can understand this is 16-bit because these are all 1111 this is again 1111 third one is again 1111 and fourth one is again 1111 these all zeros are like that 10 is equal to four zeros because this is a four bit data so this output of the 16 bit will be displayed at the time we require it so this will go to a display unit display unit here I have uh, the output of the integrator to be sent to a comparator to be sent to a comparator so this comparator should compare the input with the ground and when the comp signal is compared across from across the ground value so this should send generate a stop pulse so here stop pulse should be generated and of course counter is having a clock input you are getting a clock pulse over here and we have the the 16 bit data compared through this comparator so how it works so initially we will set the input input point the input setting point to a voltage so that it charges to the required voltage as per the integrating rate of the integrator it means if I have to measure the input voltage I will set initially the input voltage as V in and it will be applied to the integrator for a fixed time but because the input voltage 
will be completely different if it is a high voltage the so integrator will be charged to a higher voltage in a given amount of time if it is applied to a small input voltage the integrator will be charged through a smaller voltage for the same period of time so initially for a fixed period of time i am applying an unknown voltage to be measured so due to this application depending upon the voltage the counter will build up a 16 bit information and once it is charged to the maximum level the input voltage setting is changed to the reference voltage vr so now the reference voltage vr is a negative going voltage which will discharge the integrator so once it starts discharging it will go for discharging the integrator as long as the comparator does not get an a comparating input which will result a change of the polarity of the output that is from high voltage it will go to a low voltage crossing the zero and thus generating a pulse of negative polarity which will be resetting the 16 bit binary counter as well as latching it for the display to the output so initially it is charged for a fixed time go to a given voltage level which will determine the count of the 16 bit binary counter so once it is charged to the highest level as per the input voltage it is discharged through a reference voltage which is a fixed voltage so discharging time will depend upon the amount of charging you have got in the first slope so first slope is a rising slope which will give you the counting for the amount of the input voltage and second slope would be a falling slope which will determine the time for which the complete charged voltage across the capacitor will be discharged and the comparator will be sense a change of polarity because once the input level crosses the ground voltage the output will change so this will flip the 16 bit counter and reset it and at the same time it will latch the output so that the display analogous to the analog input will come at the digital output so this is how the dual slope converter works now graphically how it happens let us see so what happens if we see graphically so we have the voltage we have the voltage and on the y-axis and time on the x-axis this is time this is voltage now initially you are giving a fixed time so this is the fixed time for which the counter will be count, uh, counter will be counting the amount of charge on the integrator so for this I am giving you two different values of the voltages this is one voltage I say one and this is another voltage I say two so these are actually the V in V in the voltages which are charging the integrator and thus counter is adding the count once the time is lapsed, this fixed time is lapsed, your counter will be reset to the value from FF, FF to 0, 0, 0, 0. So once this happens, then it again, start, again starts discharging in the other direction so that your V reference is compensated. So now the discharging will be as per the charge voltage charged. So initially we see that the time is fixed, but now the discharging will be as per the charge taken place. 
so now this time will depend upon the charge taken place so here you again start counting to certain value maybe one zero one one like that so this value will reflect on the second first on the display unit which will be analogous to the applied voltage so here we have the fixed time and the variable time as per the requirement of the voltage to be measured so here you can see that the integrator which is uh, the slope of the curve for the first half when the count increases from 0, 0 to ff up to this point up to this point the starting from 0, 0 the slope will lead it to the value ff this value is reset once the final value ff is reached now you can see that the conversion time for the dual slope converter depends on the count value that is the number of clock pulses required from start count to the stop count so this has to be overcome in another method which we call as the successive approximation convert conversion technique so in successive approximation conversion technique whatever be the value of measurement but but its conversion time is fixed so that time is less than the dual slope converter technique let us see how it works So this is the diagram of the successive approximation type analog to digital converter. Here we have a register which is the serial address register. The 8-bit serial address register is there. We have the 8-bit serial address register. Now this serial address register is the central part of the operation of the successive approximation converter so this sir has flip flop that is set or reset according to the ring counter so we have a ring counter over here we have a ring counter over here so this ring counter will be used for having track on the values of the serial address register which has changed from time to time because once the final value of measurement is reached then ring ring counter will help in latching the display unit at well as well as reset the serial address register so this serial address register output is being converted to analog voltage and compared with the input voltage as you can see here this is the input voltage so this input voltage is actually compared and the digital and the analog uh, output of the comparator is sent into the serial address register so serial address register will start building from q7 suppose i am telling you the situation that serial address register is 8 bit it means it will have 8 bit register I am just writing for your convenience this 8 bit register will vary from this this to 1111111111 right I suppose that this is equivalent to 0 volt and this is equivalent to 10 volt for example now you are applying a voltage of 7 volt for measurement so what will happen we will check it for every half part of this counter range we will start from the msb so msb is equivalent to 5 volt right so this 5 volt initially it is compared with the input voltage this is compared with the input voltage so you find that this input voltage 7 minus 5 
is equal to 2 volt which is positive so once it is positive you are setting the msb here it is q7 i am setting msb as 1 now you go to the second half so 5 volt is set and for another count it is another 5 volt so now from that half is 2.5 volt so i am comparing with the 2.5 volt i am assigning another 2.5 volt in the second pulse to q6 so q6 is assigned 2.5 volt so to assign 2.5 volt i am comparing with the remaining volt this is 2 volt so now i am doing 2 minus 2.5 and this is equal to minus 0 0.5 i understand that the voltage level has been crossed so now q6 is not set to 1 now q6 is set to 0 because i have to go for a smaller voltage so what is the smaller voltage of 2.5 this is 1.25 so this way by comparing each and every bit for each and every segment of the voltage i will reach up to q0 once q0 is set to some value or, or reset what will happen that the computer output in conjunction with the ring counter output changes the digital world at the output so the digital world at the output of the sr is changed and hence the serial address register converts an analog signal to a digital world in a fixed clock pulse because i am using the complete 8 bit each bit is set or reset by comparison so i am taking the complete fixed time it will take the complete setting or resetting time of 8 bit so this is not depending upon the charging or discharging of uh, uh, of an integrator rather this is dependent upon the comparison of each, each bit so each, 8 bits will be compared whether the voltage at the input is 7 volt or 0 0.6 volt doesn't matter it will compare out all the 8 bits so once all the 8 bits are compared because we start from the msb so all the 8 bits will be compared so once all the 8 bits are compared the time is fixed and at the same time once they are com all compared the ring counter will find that the all comparisons are completed then the output is last the output is last which is displayed uh, through the display unit the display unit will display the output and at the same time the serial address register is reset for the next comparison of voltage so this is how the serial address register and ring counter together will use a method of comparison of the analog voltage and at the same time this analog voltage for being comparison is converted into a digital data so in this application of successive approximation converter you are using a digi digital, digital to analog converter also so in this way we understand that there are two useful techniques for the voltage conversion from analog to digital so this much is for today and in the next lecture we shall study about voltage to frequency conversion so you can refer to the book by professor ak sahane and the matter has been partially taken from this book and the, from the website if this lecture is useful you can like it and subscribe it for further information by setting the bell icon thank you for your patient listening